Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about regular expressions again. Uh, I did a tutorial, crash course, etc. Uh, that I'll link in the description. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about back references. And back references are a way to refer to the parts of a match either within the match itself or after you have matched it or when you're doing a string replacement. Uh, so I'm going to show you a practical example of them and then kind of walk you through various parts of them. Okay, so the first uh, the thing that we're going to try and do today is we're going to try and match a string, either a double quoted string or a single quoted string. Now we're not going to handle escapes or any of the other stuff today, so we're going to we're going to try and keep it very very simple. Uh, so we're going to import the re module, and the things that we want to match is either single quoted string or double quoted string. Those are the things we're trying to aim for. Now you might imagine making a pattern that looks like this. A uh, the start being either a single quote character or a double quote character, then some number of characters, and then either a single quote character or a double quote character at the end. Now note I had to escape the single quote because I'm writing a single quote string here, um, but this might be a pattern that you would start with. And if we try and match a double quoted string, you'll see that that succeeds properly. And if we try and match a single quoted string, we'll see that. Oh, if I can type properly, single quote, double quote, uh, you'll see that that matches properly. Uh, but this pat pattern has a subtle bug in it in that it allows you to match an unbalanced string. So one that starts with a single quote, but ends with a double quote, which we don't want to match. Uh, that, that shouldn't be what we're matching here. We really want the quote type to match at the beginning and the end. And the easiest way to do that is by using a back reference. So when we go back to this pattern that we're compiling here, uh, I am going to make the first uh, quote type into a group, so put parentheses around it. And then we're going to make sure that at the end of the string, we match exactly the same character that we saw before. And we're going to do that by using backslash one. This refers to the first positional group inside of the regular expression. Uh, so in this case, you know, we're, we're matching this group here again, but the exact contents that it saw before. And it allows us to reference it somewhere else in the string. So if we do this now, and if we do pat.match, and well, we'll just go through the, the one. So we didn't want to match this one. If we don't match that one, that's good. We do want to match this one. And where's our last one? We do want to match this one as well. So now we're making sure that the uh, quote type that we match at the beginning is the same as the quote type that we match at the end. And this number, you know, if you have more groups, you'll match that group based on whatever group it is. Now this may seem that it's one indexed. Uh, the zeroth index actually matches the entire string itself. Uh, so there, there, I can't really think of the useful use of actually using backslash zero in this context. Uh, I'll show some other context later where we'll actually care about that. Uh, but in this case, we, we don't really care about that. Uh, the other thing that you might have is you might have a named group I believe I covered this in the other video, but if not, the way you name a group is by doing question mark P and then whatever you're naming it here. So let's say that we call it the quote group. Uh, we can still refer to that quote using the positional index here. So if we do this, you'll see it still matches. Uh, but I usually find it's better to, like, if you're using a named group here, it's better to use a named group here when you're matching this as well. And you can do that by doing P equals uh, the name of this. So this is this is a back reference, but a named back reference. So you can see here, uh, we now get this. And if we, uh, we and, and those are the two ways you refer to back references, either um, numerically or by name inside the pattern itself. Now, once you have a match object, you can still refer to these named groups. They aren't really back references here, but uh, let's say that we get our match here. Uh, you can access match one, which will be that first index here. Now, granted, we're using named patterns. It still works. And I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't recommend mixing the positional syntax with the name syntax. I would use the name syntax here, quote. Uh, so that's how you can reference these particular named groups, either by position or by name. Now, this syntax, I believe, is new in Python 3. Point, I want to say 3.6. Uh, the old way you would do this is by doing match dot it's groups, groups, print, print, group. <laughs> I haven't used the old way in so long that I don't remember. Uh, oh, it's group like this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I always use the index form now. So, uh, oh, and 
there's you know our zeroth group that we were talking about before so if you want to reference the whole string you can do that or the whole match uh, okay so this is how you reference it when you are dealing with a match again just to recap this is how you reference it when it's inside of a pattern and the last part is when you want to do a replacement now let's say that we were matching this string up here and we wanted to let's actually add this as a group um i don't know what's an example here maybe i don't know maybe we wanted to add some string some contents at the beginning of our string here but we wanted to leave the quotes in place uh so you might make a pattern like this notice now that uh actually let's put a let's put a name on this so that it's easy to reference later the i don't know the meat of the string <laughs> so now if we do pat.match foo uh and we Assign that to a real match. Meet should just be the inner parts. And if we look at the quote here, we can do that as well. Now we might want to replace this and we can do that by doing pat.sub uh, and with our new replacement here, we can reference the groups that we matched up here. Uh, I usually use the numbered ones here most of the time, but again, probably don't want to mix the numbered ones and the not numbered ones. Uh, so if we do back one, back two, back one, but we put I don't know hello in front of this and we have our double quoted string foo you'll see that we're able to add contents to the beginning of our string here now note the backslash one is the same syntax that we used before this refers to the first positional groups which is this one here uh, and this refers to the second positional group here now uh, you can use the name syntax i think it's actually g quote and then g meet and then g quote again uh, and again this is what i would recommend if you're using named groups use named matches here uh, the backslash g is match the g match match the group in the previous one um, and you can also use numbers in these brackets if i remember correctly too and this is to allow for disambiguating in your replacement string i actually had a really fun bug oops we left uh oh this should be g2 um, I actually had a pretty funny bug at work res uh, related to this backslash one here where this string was variable and it was actually like a git, uh, a git revision. And if the git revision started with a number, <laughs> the regex engine was trying to match, like for instance, if we were trying to do, uh, just imagine this got substituted, like one, two, three, dead beef, for instance. Uh, the regex engine was like, oh, I'm going to try and find the... 1,123rd group and uh, or it's actually going to turn it into a hex character yeah turn it into a hex character anyway it did completely not what I was expecting and so I was able to remove the ambiguity by using backslash g to match exactly what I wanted which was the the back reference group okay to summarize things here um inside a pattern you will have backslash one for positional groups and you'll have question mark p equals name for named groups and the zeroth group uh, zeroth group is the whole string inside the match you can use bracket one for positional groups and you can use bracket name for named groups so I should say match this. And in replacements, you can use uh, backslash one for positional groups. You can also use backslash G1 for positional groups as well. And you can use backslash G name for named groups. And that's kind of the summary of back references and regular expressions. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.